On Wednesday nights, we call it Activate Wednesday, and the reason that we do that is because, um, you know, there are gifts of the Spirit that, that should be in operation with all of us. And so, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we usually look at verse 1, which says, Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. There's three instructions there. We pursue love first, but we cultivate the desire for spiritual gifts so that we can experience that level uh, with God, and especially that we may prophesy so that we can bless others. But he goes on down beginning explaining things like what it means to uh, speak in tongues and and its place in a corporate setting, you know, and, and prophecy and all of that. But one of the things that Paul said, he said, I... I will sing with the Spirit, and I'll also sing with my understanding. There are times that you can sing in tongues, that you can sing in another language, but the whole point is you're singing, you're connecting with your voice to what the Spirit of God is doing. And so, what you, you know, so even in the middle of worship and in the, sometimes in those, in those in-between moments that we have, I encourage you, take those moments, yield to it, sing a new song. Sing something different. Let it be your own personal communion with God. Watch what happens. Do it in your time at home. Do it when you're driving down the road. Um, and yield to that because the more you do, that's just another level for you to hear from God, another level for Him to minister to you. Turn with me over to Acts chapter 12. Let me show you the importance of what we're doing here for just a moment, and then, then I've got some, some exciting news and direction of where we're headed over the next few weeks. In Acts chapter 12, no, Acts chapter 13, my, my fault, sorry about that. I was close. In Acts chapter 13, verse 1, it says, now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. So here we're seeing, let's just get it up on screen, Acts chapter 13, verse 1. So here we see that here's a church. This is a spirit-filled church. They have the gifts of the spirit in operation, certain prophets and teachers. There is Barnabas, Simeon, which was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. So Saul, who we know is the Apostle Paul now. In verse 2, I want you to look at this. In verse 2, it says, as they ministered to the Lord. Did you know that part of your ministry is to the Lord? In other words, you're not always, you're not the one that's to be ministered to always. Did you know that you have a role, there's a role in your life that you minister to the Lord? That he receives ministry from you. Isn't that something? And so here they are ministering to the Lord. They fasted. And during this time, so, so the, there's just this whole time of ministry to the Lord. I'm sure that there's prophecy going forth. I'm sure that there's singing and worshiping and all of these kinds of things that we talk about. And that's when the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. When they had made a decision, Barnabas and Saul, I'm going to minister to the Lord. I'm surrendering to the Lord. Father, I just want to minister to you at this moment in this time in my life that in the middle of that ministry was the greatest call on their life. They were called to go out. Do not sell yourself short that your ministry to the Father, your ministry to the Lord, that it could be a setup for your greatest moment to hear from Him. You see that? Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And then in verse 3, so then having fasted and prayed. So they continued. They didn't just say, oh, we just heard from the Holy Ghost. Let's go. Now they waited. Okay. 
continued fasting, more prayed. They laid hands on them and they sent them away. And this began Paul's very first missionary journey to which now we have so much of our New Testament that's been written. Think about that. I, I, I want you to see that for just a moment. Think about that, that the New Testament that we read, so many of these letters are the result of a time of ministering to the Lord. A time set aside for worship. A time set aside for fasting. A time set aside for praying. That it wasn't just Paul was walking down the road one day and the Holy Spirit said, oh, I want you to go. It happened during, and this, and, and I also want you to notice that it happened in a corporate setting. That it happened in the safety of a body of believers. That's huge. That's why it's important for us to gather together. That's why it's important for us to hear from the Holy Spirit together. You don't know somebody in this moment at this time may have a word from God for you to be confirmed by others. That's what we're seeing on Wednesday nights so often is the confirmation from one word to the next, to the next, to the next. I just feel the, um, the weight and the importance of this for just a moment. Praise God. Okay, now, there's that. So, for the next probably four to eight weeks, we're going we're gonna to mix things up. Still going to be Activate Wednesday, but there's, there's going to be a focus. Okay, so what we've been doing is we've been just kind of coming in every Wednesday and saying, okay, Spirit of God, what are you saying for us tonight? And, and we'll, just be, we'll just be ready to, to move and ready to adjust and that sort of thing, right? So, but tonight, today, the Lord gave me some instruction for the next four to eight weeks, which is amazing that I know four to eight weeks ahead of time what we're going to talk about, right? That's a, that's a huge moment we should celebrate. Anyway, um, but it, we're going we're gonna to key off of last week. And one of the very first gifts of the Spirit is the word of wisdom, right? The word of wisdom. And, then, and, and the Lord just took us on a marvelous journey into, the, into Proverbs and into wisdom. So we're going to do this for the next four to eight weeks. And so what I want to do here is I want to take a look at, um, let's look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for peace. It's awesome. No, it's all, it's all good. Can I tell you an amazing testimony that's being worked out? This is, it, again, knowing that the Father is preparing everything for you. Last night, you know what? Um, so my sister had, I was in the middle of teaching um, a forever free class that we do. And, 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 and we were doing it via Zoom, and this was kind of, uh, we're doing it with Karis Bible College in Colorado. And, and so my phone rang in the middle of it, and it was my sister, and so I just let it go, cause, or in the middle of it. And then it rang again. What does that mean? Answer the phone. <laughs> it's important. And there she was right in the middle of it. Um, and, and so I, I try not to be too graphic with this, but basically... Uh, my nephew, Alex, uh, was sliding into home, I uh, know, sliding into third base or something like that on a baseball. The pitcher threw the ball and it hit him right in the mouth and knocked a tooth out. Front permanent tooth. And so immediately she's like, you know, I need, I need a, a, our dentist number. I need this. I need this. And she's on it. She's being a mom, that kind of thing. And, and so I'm thinking, 
oh no, what do you do when a permanent tooth gets knocked out and all of that? And you know, not that God causes that or any of that, but he, she said, I just remember over and over from Sunday morning, be thankful, be thankful, be thankful. I just kept going over because that's what we talked about Sunday morning. Be thankful, be thankful. She said, and in the middle of it, I said, come on, shut up. I got to do, like, you know, she was hearing my voice, be thankful. How can I be thankful right now? And so in the middle of it, what happened is God so wonderfully because she, she stayed in that place. We're going to walk in the wisdom of God. God, what do we do? And so she, she got one, uh, one uh, instruction from a dentist friend of ours that, you know, save the tooth because it didn't break at all. It just came out root and all. That's crazy, right? And then, and so, you know, and the instruction was put it in milk so it doesn't die. I didn't even know that was a thing. So she put it in milk, but then she called another uh, friend, friend of the, hers that works at a dentist, and she said, okay, what you're going to have to do, you have to do it within an hour, but you have to put the tooth back in. Oh. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not going to go through the whole story uh, because, right? <laughs> Except that she walked her through, she FaceTimed her, and so, and so what she did is she took the tooth and she put it back in. And it, in the process, saved the tooth and everything is healing back up. Boom, 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 boom. The wisdom of God, boom, boom, saved all of it. And so even in that situation, God still is faithful you know, and, 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 and so that's, that's amazing. So what we did, I, I didn't know all of that was going on except to call her. And she said, I just need this number. This is what's going on. And so what we did is we stopped and we immediately prayed. I prayed with the whole group that was on our forever free, uh, uh zoom thing. This is what's going on. Let's pray about it right now. And we just watched the faithfulness of God. Somebody say, God is faithful. God is faithful. You don't have to panic. You don't have to, uh, it, in the middle of uh, a crisis or anything like that, you can still count on the faithfulness of God. And can I tell you that um, in the middle of it, this is where we were talking about the love of God. And at this, usually in, in this in this teaching that we do, we spend some time at the end of this teaching to help people really connect, help the Spirit of God, you know, let them get, you know, we just kind of go through a three to five minute moment where, Father, you just show us your love. Give us and uh, reveal your love to us at a greater capacity in a greater way than we've ever seen before. And so we just help people do that. And, and the testimonies and what people see and what happens is just amazing. But um, as we were doing that, as I was just praying and, and just meditating, all of a sudden I had the picture of this large hand. And this large hand was out in front of me like down the road it was the father's hand and what could have been a mountain an obstacle something to trip me up something that was designed to delay me or something that was designed to um, uh, get me off course does that make sense I saw this hand taking it and just smoothing it over and just smoothing it over and then it became just a, a little bit of a bump a little bit of you know just something that was just nothing in my way the father going ahead and just preparing and that's a picture I believe that he just wanted me to share with all of you because he's making every provision for you the uh, Jesus said in, in in Luke chapter 12 that the father knows that you have need of before you ask him Thank you, Jesus. Um, Patrick, think about that. And just see if the Lord gives you something uh, to share along those lines later on. You know, Patrick's also, it, I asked him, I, I just felt like that uh, it'd be great for, for him to kind of be down here. Patrick's always running so much things here, but there's so much in him uh, that's not just production oriented, you know, from the Spirit of God. and uh, But he's also... Uh, uh, the kind of guy that'll say, nope, I don't have anything. You know, he's not going to just come up here because I asked him to. So I'm just, uh, anyway, the, the Lord was just quickening that to me. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do here, I want to um, really dig into this. 
Look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. So that, anyway, the, the, there, that's a testimony. There's some things there that you can run with. But look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. I want to start here, and then we're going to look at some things, uh, setting this up for the next few weeks. And then we'll get in some activate in just a moment. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. So there are different ways that we can do things in life, and it seems right. It may seem right in a given moment, but, at the, but we don't know. We don't see ahead like the Father sees ahead that the end of it can produce destruction in our lives. So it's important for us to connect with God's wisdom. All right, so let's go back to, uh, let's go to Proverbs chapter, uh, chapter 1. Let's start here. And, and, and again, tonight I'm going to set up a foundation for this. And, and again, Proverbs was written, it says right here at the very beginning, Proverbs 1, verse 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. So now we know who wrote these, to know wisdom and instruction, to know wisdom and instruction. Okay, now let's go to chapter three. I'm going to show you, man, this is going to be so much fun. I can't wait for this. This is awesome. In chapter three, we looked at this last week. My son, do not forget my law. Let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life. We talked about that, right? Length of days and long life. What it literally means, years of life and refers to the quality of your length of days. In other words, the years of your life will be many, but they will be years of life in its truest sense as one of true happiness and enjoyment. That's awesome. Length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them about your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Now, if we go all the way down to verse um, 13, happy is the man who finds wisdom. And the man who gains understanding. There's another verse that says wisdom is the principal thing. What's the most important thing in your life? It's wisdom. What wisdom? God's wisdom. Not human wisdom. The wisdom that comes from God. It says out of his mouth comes wisdom. And here's the thing. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things that you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, in her left hand, riches and honor. So these are all the things that are found in wisdom. Okay. Length of days, riches and honor, all of these things, her ways are ways of pleasantness. Do you want to live a life of pleasantness? Okay, that's cool. All her paths are peace. James chapter 3 verse uh, 17, I think it is, says that the wisdom that comes from above is first peaceable. Wisdom always brings peace. She is a tree of life to those that take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. Do you want to be happy? Okay, few of you do. And so, the, for you few, wisdom, it's found in wisdom. Even the Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth, verse 19 says. Okay? So, what we're going to do over the next, again, I say four to eight weeks. The book of Proverbs is filled with the wisdom of God life it'll tell you how to deal with finances it tells you how to deal with relationships it tells you how to to live you know with the right perspective it tells tells you about people to avoid it tells you about how um what what your what your work life should look like it actually has wisdom it talks about your marriage it talks about all of these things that actually has to do with every aspect and facet of life. And somebody may say, well, yeah, but Proverbs, that's Old Testament. No. Proverbs is wisdom for your life. It is wisdom that came from God 
And the wisdom of God is timeless. It's eternal. Guess what? Did you know that like for one proverb, for instance, says a merry heart does good like a medicine. That if you can be happy all the time, it's actually going to help you. But a broken spirit, it dries the bones. Was that just for people that lived three or 4,000 years ago? Or do you think people still deal with depression, anxiety, and all of that, and bitterness, and that they're still having bone problems today? And, and, and now, so it's just that now we have a scientific term, osteoporosis. Solomon didn't have that term. And when doctors can't figure out what's going on, it's because they don't know that people are living in unforgiveness and bitterness and all of that thing, and it's going in and it's affecting their life source. Think about this for a moment. Where, where is the blood generated? Where is the blood created? Where? In the marrow of the bones, right? And so if you are bitter, if you are bitter and dried up, Proverbs, way back when, the wisdom of God says, if you're bitter and dried up, it's going to dry up your bones. Before science had ever discovered that blood is created in the bones. Do you not think that the wisdom of God is eternal and there's wisdom for your life today? See? So, get happy. Don't hold on to stuff. Forgive. It's hurting you more than it is hurting, hurting them. Let the life of God begin to dwell. Man, praise God. So to set this up, and then we'll get into some activate here in just a moment, but to set this up, let's find out where the source of Solomon's wisdom came from, okay? We're going to study his life for just a moment as a setup then now you'll know where we're going over the next few weeks. Let's start with him, all right? Solomon was, we know, one of King David's son. And so when David died, Solomon became king of Israel. And so here's the deal. Solomon was tasked. By the way, anybody know how old Solomon was when he became king? Say? Anybody? Early 20s early 20s that would be like um, Austin how old are you 24 come here say hello to the next president of the United States right now right how would you respond what would you think of if all of a sudden this guy I don't mean this in a bad way but I'm just saying, 24-year-old, we're like, he has no life experience yet. He just, he's just now out of college or, or whatever. You don't have the wisdom we would think naturally, right? I just, I'm using this as an illustration so that you see, because a lot of times when we think about figures in the Bible, somehow we get this idea that they're so wise and, and mature and got, got everything all together. We just have this picture and no, he was just a guy in tennis shoes or tennis sandals. I don't know what they had back then. Thanks, man. Anyway, just using this as, a, as an illustration for a moment. And, and, and so he was taking over this kingdom. And not only that, but he was tasked with building the temple for God. David had made the plans, had put it all together, had the vision for it. And then Solomon, his... 20 something year old son he said now you're the one that's going to build it think about that so Solomon was in his 20s and and you'll see here in verse uh, 1 let's look at 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 1 this is awesome stuff man I love this watch this 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 1 now the days of David drew near that he should die I'll wait for it to come up on screen so everybody has it now the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong. 
therefore, and prove yourself a man. How would you like to hear that? Son, I want you to be strong and prove that you're a man. Prove yourself a man. But then he says this, and keep the, char keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies as it, is, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. Lots of instruction there. But, but this is what I want you to see here for just a moment, that what he said, uh, I, and then let me, uh, let's read a, another one real quick. Uh, let's see. Well, let's finish verse four. That the Lord may fulfill his word, which he spoke concerning me, saying, if your sons take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. That was the promise. Now, let's take a look at First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 9. This is, this is, again, David talking to Solomon. And he says this, First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. I'm, I'm giving our uh, media people uh, scriptures they're not used to typing in so first chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 let's go to the next verse as for you my son solomon look at this his first command know the god of your father hear this young ones It's not enough for your parents to know God. Solomon could have said, David knows God. My father knows God. But there was this instruction. Solomon, now you, it's time for you to know the God of your father. That's your responsibility. Praise God. There's a word in that for some people. There's a word online for some people there. Know the God of your father. Serve him with a loyal heart, with a willing mind, for the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. And here he gets, says again, be strong and do it. <laughs> I just love it. Be strong and do it. All right. So let's just fast forward. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in that. But what I want you to see now, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. And I'm just going to go a few more minutes. This is just a setup to show you that where we're going over the next four to eight weeks, so ordained by God, so needed for our generation, so needed for the time that we live in. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3, if you look, it says, And Solomon, what? Loved the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David, except that he had sacrificed and burned incense in the high places. And so, verse 4 says, The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for there was a great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. And can I say it this way? And, and the reason why is he set himself to seek the Lord. This is, we'll see this in another place. But he set himself to seek the Lord. And he didn't go and he didn't ask the priest to offer that sacrifice. He did it himself. He offered the sacrifices, a thousand burnt offerings on the Lord. Or not on the Lord, but to the Lord. So look at what happened. So at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask, what shall I give you? <laughs> what, 
God sometimes, he just, he uses few words. I mean, he knows exactly what, ask, what do you want me to give you? He didn't say, hey, Solomon, it's good to see you. I'm so glad you chose to become king. I'm excited. You know, it wasn't a long prophecy. Just ask, what shall I give you? Solomon got God's attention. You know, there was a place, uh, a threshing floor that um, David wanted to sacrifice to God. And, and because of a great victory or some things that had happened. And, um, and so because of his reputation and everything, the guy that owned this place said, here, you can just have it. Because David said, what, how much do you want for it? I want to buy it from you. And the guy says, no, 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 you can just have it. I'll just give it to you, David. And he said, no, tell me the price. He said, because I will not give to the Lord something that costs me nothing. He wanted what he was offering. He wanted what he was worshiping God with. He wanted, he wanted, it, he wanted it to mean something. And so he was willing to sacrifice to pay the price so that, what, so that it was meaningful. And this is what Solomon did. I'm going to give a thousand burnt offerings. This requires time. It requires effort. It requires something from me, you know. And, and I think that uh, in our fast food society, in our instant gratification society, that sometimes that we forget what it means to really offer the sacrifices of praise and really say, no, 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 I want, I want what I, my worship to the Father, my worship to God. I want, I, I want my, my life to become that living sacrifice to Him because now I'm not my own. So, let me make sure that everything that I do for you, Father, is a reflection of my deep devotion to you. And as a result, God shows up in a dream. Ask, what shall I give you? And so Solomon answered, verse 6, You have shown great mercy to your servant, David, my father, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you've given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. I love Solomon's heart because he's just talking about the goodness and the mercy of God. And he says, Now, O Lord, my God, you've made your servant king instead, in the stead of my father David, but I am a little child. So he, he didn't say, I got it all together or anything like this. He didn't say, you know, I got this or anything like that. He recognized and he was humble and he was meek before his God, and he said, I do not know how to go out or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Man, that's amazing. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing. If you were to look at Second Chronicles 1 and 6, God says, because this was in your heart. Because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but you've asked yourself for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you nor shall any like you arise after you. I have also given you what you have not asked. This is awesome. Both riches and honor so that there shall not be anyone like you among, uh, among the kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. All right. So now we see that the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding 
that Solomon had was God-given. He had the spirit of wisdom, unlike anybody up to that point had ever given or had been given. And so if we go into the book of Proverbs, what we're going to see is we're going to see the result of a man that was wiser than any person up to that point. Now, the Bible says that the Spirit of God, that, that there's a spirit of wisdom. It says that Christ is made unto us wisdom. It says that we have um, the Spirit of God on the inside of us, and we know all things, so we have wisdom. But what happens is, is that as we, uh, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And so there's, there's this... Uh, uh, responsibility that we have to know what the Word of God says, to know what Scripture says, to know what wisdom is there, and then what will happen is the Holy Spirit will bring those things to our remembrance. And so, we're going to take a fun journey over the next um, over the next few weeks and just see the wisdom that this man got from God. Now, here's the other thing about wisdom. If you read the book of Proverbs, thank you, Father. This will be my last thing, and then we'll, we're going to do a couple other things. Um, if you look at the book of Proverbs, Solomon had a lot of wisdom concerning women. He talks about the strange woman. He talks about the kind of women to avoid. And so God had given him insight. God had given him wisdom, yet... He didn't act on that wisdom. So just because you've been given wisdom doesn't automatically mean that that wisdom's going to turn into the favor and the blessing of God on your life. Just because you have understanding and just because you have knowledge doesn't mean that it's going to automatically produce the results that that wisdom is supposed to produce. Because now you have to make a decision whether you're going to trust that and live out of that versus just containing it and just being, man, I know what God said. This is what God's told me to do. This is what, you know, and, and, and the problem is, is people never take the knowledge and the understanding and wisdom, and they never allow themselves sometimes to walk that out, to step out on it. And so Solomon actually, did you see that, that, that one scripture there where it says that, that he said, um, again, he said, if you, verse 14, walk in my ways, keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. I will lengthen your days. So how long did Solomon live? I have this written down here somewhere. Anybody know? I have so many notes on this. Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, Solomon died at 60 years of age. 60 years. Is that long life? So did God lie? He said, if you walk in my commands, if you walk in my wisdom... What, did, what happened with Solomon at the end? He ended up with like 300 wives or 700 wives or 600 or something. Like, like, like more than one's too many. I, I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way. It just is. <laughs> so, so I don't remember. And then he also had these concubines. So even though he had wisdom concerning women to avoid, he didn't. And what happened is those women turned his heart, the Bible says, at the end of his days away from God. So as a young man, he didn't listen to the wisdom that God gave him. And what it did is it produced in his, the latter half of his life a moving away from the things of God, and it shortened his life. So let's not just learn what Solomon learned. Let's apply it in our lives. Thank you, Father. Okay? So that's where we're going. I wanted to set it up, first of all, as this foundation. Okay? Um, Patrick, do you have anything? Anything? 
I don't know. Once I released it, I let it go. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yes, I did. Provision? Okay. Good. Uh, over the last few weeks, something that, that the Lord's really been kind of showing me and sharing with me is, like you said, provision and equipping. I, I heard you say equipping the saints. That's what I heard. And, and I really didn't hear everything you said because I was all ready. Sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> As we raise our kids, you know, in conversations I have with Pastor Mark a lot, I, I really look at my relationship with my father much the same that I look at my relationship to my daughter and how I deal with her and react to her and the things I want for her. I kind of flip that. And that's how my father is with me. When we raise our kids, we don't raise them based on what they can do or what they know or their abilities. We raise them based on their potential. When God calls us, he doesn't call us based on what we can do, our abilities, but he calls us based on our potential. You look back through the Bible and most of the people that he called to follow him, most of the people that Jesus went to call, how many used to watch uh, Deadliest Catch on, on uh, see, they know. <laughs> the fishing show on Discovery. They would go out in the Bering Straits. A fisherman, how many of you know sailors, fishermen, and the type of people they are? Not saying they're bad people, but just they're actions and vocabulary and you know most of the people Jesus called to follow him were fishermen and sailors now do you think Jesus is calling them based on their abilities because they were fishermen but he saw the potential God sees the potential in Paul to write the New Testament so God sees the potential in us. It's funny, we were having a conversation with Peyton last night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, was, it was not a fun conversation. But I remember sitting back down with her and saying, Baby girl, the reason we expect so much out of you because we know your potential. You might not see it, but we know your potential and what she's capable of doing. She is at, at her, she just turned 18 years old. At 18 years old, she is so much further along than where I was at 18 because we raise her based on that potential. So God calls us based on our potential, not because of our abilities and what we can do, because once he calls us, then he equips us. I have a nephew that joined the army and he just graduated uh, basic two weeks ago and we were on the phone with him several weeks ago and, and, and he was excited they issued my gun today I'm like hey alright cool you got a gun yeah and when you join the army and the United States sends you overseas to serve or whatever do they tell you hey you need to go buy this 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 and this if they train you to fly a multi-million dollar jet, you know what, you need to get a loan and pay for the jet that you're going to use. No, the United States equips you, they spend millions of dollars in training you, and then they equip you with what you need to go over and, and do what you're being trained to do, to do your job in service to the country. So our Father not only not only calls us on our potential, but he equips us. You know, the things that I do in production here, I sit back and I look and I think, wow, how did I? I never had any training. I never had any, I never, I didn't go to school for this. It's just stuff that there's that call and then there's that equipping based on potential and just really trusting in God. You know, uh, that for me, that's the most basic. Just trust in God for everything. 
Uh, I had a job interview with my company last week. And I remember before joining that interview, everything's virtual now, before I made the call, just like I do before I would get up here and speak or whatever, I pray, Father, you give me the words to say. You know, I'm, I'm like Moses. Moses was not very eloquent. My wife is always correcting my vocabulary. But you sit down and you just trust in the Holy Ghost. You trust in the Father to equip your conversation, to equip that next few minutes or whatever with what you need to say, how you need to answer questions, what I need to get up here and say. You know, Pastor Mark came to me before the service. Hey, he had all this planned out. And, and I'm like, sure, yeah, okay, great, I'll be there. And, and it was at that point to where, okay, these are things that are starting to come back to me, bringing those things back to our remembrance. See, where he gave it to me, there's an illustration I share. I get to share with the praise and worship team quite a bit in our meetings in the morning. There was an illustration I shared with them a couple months ago. Uh, this this uh, pastor I was watching, uh, before he was going up on stage to minister, he took his wallet out and handed it to his son and said, hey, hold on to this for me. And then he was teaching something along the lines of equipping the saints. You have what you need when you need it. He calls his son up on stage. Hey, I need $268 in cash right now. $268. And his son's looking at him like, well, I ain't got $268. He said, check. I need $268. And his son's pulls a wallet out and opens it up. It's got $268. He takes it out and hands it to his dad. And the point of the illustration was, you might not know it's there, but it's there. Just trust in the Lord, and he'll provide, and he'll equip, and he'll make sure you can answer the call that he's put on your life. Amen. I think uh, Patrick needs to not be doing as much production anymore. That was awesome. Praise God. Okay, who took my challenge last week and actually started reading through Proverbs? Okay, good. Um, that's awesome. So the four of you, let's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, whoever that was, I didn't count them real quick, but... How about each one of you come up, and Alan, if you could go ahead and get on keys. So each one of you that took that challenge, some of you are thinking, thank God I didn't take that challenge right now. I'm so glad. No, come on up. This is the... This so is what we're going to do. This is us encouraging each other. So we just heard from Patrick that you've been totally equipped now. Uh, and so um, <laughs> Sherry goes to the end of the line. She says, I'm not going to be, a, I'm not going over here. This is awesome. No, this is pray, praise God. I'm going to pray. I imagine y'all have read different. Huh? Yeah, pray, pray hard. Um, and the, as as I pray, and let's just let's just hear how the Spirit of God has used the wisdom, something that maybe you read, that just comes to mind. It just comes to mind. It may even seem like, well, that's not. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. But um, let's just let let's see what the Spirit of God does. This is, so what we do here, again, Activate Wednesday. What are we doing? We're, we're growing together. And, and so, and I know, I know every one of these uh, people that are up here, they, they look forward to the opportunity to be able to grow, you know, so I'm not just calling them out. Um, I know that they, can, that they can handle it. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are the, you're the revealer. You're the teacher. And we are excited 
We are excited about this journey that we have just embarked on, starting with last week and tonight. And this is led by you to to see from your word the practical wisdom that we need for, for our lives. In a world and in a culture where truth seems to be in short supply and people don't know where they can find it. And oftentimes we might find ourselves coming to church needing wisdom and needing instruction and needing a word from you and yet there's so much of the things that we need for life that we find right here in your scripture, right here in the book of Proverbs, right right there that you've already made it there, that maybe we don't need somebody to give us a prophetic word, but that actually that you've already spoken that word and we're just seeking it, we're finding it. And that together as a church family, as a body, we can encourage one another through scripture and through what you've revealed to us through the week in the book of Proverbs and the wisdom that comes from you because out of your mouth proceeds the wisdom that we need. And so, Father, thank you. Thank you for the ones that are up here that came up just because I asked. Lord, bring to their remembrance right now something that they've read over the past week that would be for somebody here tonight that would be for somebody watching by live stream your wisdom a word of wisdom that will answer a question that will answer a prayer in Jesus name thank you father amen who wants to go first And if you don't think that you have anything, then take some time, pray in the Spirit, you know, and and let the Spirit of God. This is a great opportunity. It'd be easy to let you guys do it sitting down. It's a little more intense when you're standing up here in front of everybody, but this is where it's learning to be instant in season and out of season, right? So it's good. Praise God. Lois? She says, not yet. Okay, David. So God here lately has been giving me just a word. A couple weeks ago, he gave me the word gravity. And tonight, he gave me a word right at the end of praise and worship as you were singing, gave me a word. And it was one of those like, what? And the word was magnitude magnitude. And so I've been meditating on this word because I knew it was from God. I mean, I'm not, I'm not thinking about the word magnitude as we've been listening about Solomon and the wisdom. And God started talking to me about magnitude. So where do we hear the word magnitude most of the time? Earthquakes. So we could say there was an earthquake in California, but we could say there was an 8.4 magnitude or a 9.6 magnitude. And what happened with Solomon? He asked God for wisdom. And God, God could have said, here's some wisdom. That's not what he did. He said, we're gonna amplify the magnitude of that wisdom and We're going to amplify your riches and your life and the length of your days and everything associated with goodness in your life. We're going to give it some extra magnitude, some, some extra. We're going to give it some force. Solomon, 5,000 years later, was known for being the smartest man that ever lived. There was some magnitude to it. And then Patrick came up and he said, God doesn't call call you based on your abilities. He calls you based on your potential. That's magnified. There's a magnitude to that potential. 
It's amplified. It's ramped up. And then he equips you with some magnitude to it, with some amplification. Not, not just barely enough. It's more than enough. And so as I've been reading Proverbs and thinking about the things in it, God's been magnifying and amplifying the wisdom that comes along with it. Magnitude. That's awesome. Let's give the Lord praise for that. Yeah, you can sit. You're, you're good. No, that's, that's awesome. So it, so it might not be a proverb that you read. It could be the impact that it's beginning to have on you. So, Olivia? So I didn't know what I was going to say. And I was like, Lord, I don't, honestly, I don't remember anything that I read. But I'll come up here anyway. And um, as I was praying, the Lord was um, kind of, was, I was remembering that when he's talking about wisdom in Proverbs, he refers to it as her. And, um, and when you think about a, a female, you, it's a very sweet and a very, um, sorry, very sweet. And, um, it's, it's something that you hold dear. It's, it, it's precious. And the wisdom from the Lord is something precious that you don't take for granted. Um, and that it's, and it, and as you get that wisdom and speak that wisdom out, it's going to come out as a sweet and precious thing. And it's not going to come out as something angry or it's not, if you've got a word to say to somebody, it's going to come out as a, a loving thing. Um, and that, that's what I was going to Praise God. That's right. Let's give the God praise for that, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Wisdom that comes from God, and it refers to her as her throughout, and it's first peaceable. And it, and, and it says, in, again, James 3.17, that it's first peaceable, it's gentle, it's easy to be entreated, right? Praise God. Thank you, Father. Who's next? Freddie. Proverbs says that wisdom is always speaking to us, and it behooves us to hear what she's saying because it, she's always speaking to us. And wisdom is, we're to treat wisdom as our sister and our closest, dearest friend. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Praise God. Always, always speaking. And then there were two. And so the, the Lord has brought this up to me a couple times in the last couple of weeks. One time when we were in, in prayer um, at our union with Christ for a friend, and um, he brought it up as soon as I got up here. And I was like, that's not Proverbs, though, Lord. Um, but it's Habakkuk. And he says, write the vision and make it plain. And that's, and that's what I was hearing. Okay, so he just responds. So it's the wisdom of God, you know, that one of the things that... And if the Lord's been in your study time, you know, and keeps bringing that up, that there is, it is so wisdom, again, there's practical instruction. And, the, and so, and I said that as I prayed that there would be a word for specific people. What does that mean, Habakkuk 2? Write the vision, make it plain. Some of you need to take what God has been saying to you, the ideas that you've had, the dreams that you've had, and you need to write them down. Did you hear what I'm just saying? Remember, Solomon had wisdom concerning women, but yet he did not act on that wisdom. So we can sit here and we can agree and say, that's right, praise God, write the vision. Yes, preacher, we need to write the vision. And you go home and you don't write the vision. And there's some wisdom that God has just spoken to a number of people tonight from that. So thank you for that. That's what that is. That's praise God. Same thing for you watching by live stream. And now there's one. Um, okay. So 
I'm, I guess the only picture I'm getting is some of the verses that I read, and I think it was in chapter four of Proverbs. And the only reason I remember it is because my Bible had kind of flipped over to like maybe chapter 24 or something. There's those sayings, like saying 21 or something, one of those. And I remember reading it and I was like, wait, I just read something similar. And obviously some of these proverbs are repeated for good reason. So it was talking about, um, well, in chapter 4 it was talking about how wisdom, um, how God, I mean, God created the, uh, you know, formed the earth, you know, from um, through his wisdom and then through understanding he established the earth or something like that and then so what I had stumbled upon in chapter 24 or something was similar but except it was saying wisdom uh, by wisdom you build a house and by understand uh, and by understanding I think like you fill the rooms or something and that's where the treasures are and so you know just thinking of this topic of wisdom I was like I mean and you know since it's the principal thing um, to me it was like so it's the foundation and from that then you build up to other things and you know and that's where the treasures come that's where the long life and length of days and everything else comes up. that's awesome wisdom has builded her house and then through understanding the rooms are filled and so when the scripture says that wisdom is the principal thing come on up here Rachel the wisdom is the principal thing and with all you're getting, get understanding. So you can get instruction on what to do, but when you move beyond just getting the instruction on what to do, that's the, that's the skeleton, that's the, um, that's the structure. But when you get understanding, what happens is, is, is there becomes now this effortless flow that begins to fill all the different rooms in your house. That's for somebody as well. Praise God.